The year is 1976. The CN Tower would open to the public. Tim Hortons would introduce the Timbit, and Ronald Weinberg and Micheline Charest would meet in New Orleans and organize a woman film festival and began working to distribute foreign films to United States theaters before moving to New York and forming Signer. Signer, which would later become Cookie Jar, is known for a few things, but mainly helping with shows like Caillou, Arthur, and Giant Test, and also known for the Signar scandal in the 2000s. This video was suggested by CG03 Studios, and welcome to the history of Signar or Cookie Jar. Before I do get into this video, if you want to, please subscribe to this channel. I sometimes record these videos, and I like you to subscribe, but again, you don't have to. Also, I have a Discord server if you want to suggest a video idea, want to just chill, or if you don't know new videos and tweets, then join the server. Link is in the description below. Also, if you know anything's wrong in this video, then let me know either in the comments or on Twitter. Anyways, let's get into this video. So let's start when the company was about to start in 1976, when founders Ronald Weinberg from New York, United States, and Micheline Charest from London, United Kingdom, Meet in New Orleans and following the first meeting, organized a event for a women's film festival and worked on distributing films to US theaters. They would then move to New York City and form Signer on July 20th, 1976, which would be a film and television distribution company. Later, Ronald and Micheline would begin to date. In 1984, Ronald and Micheline would become parents, and with the birth of their first son, this caused Ronald and Micheline to begin reevaluating their decisions. So they decided to move from New York to Montreal, as it was more expensive to live in New York, also moving the headquarters of Sinar to Montreal. They decided to change the main focus for Sinar, making it from media distribution to media production, and began making shows for children, and continued to dub shows. In 1993, Sinar became a publicly traded company and would begin to buy out companies starting in 1996. When Sinar bought British animation studio Filmfare, the company would later absorb into Sinar and would shut down in 1998. In February 1999, Sinar acquired the film library of Lucadia Film Corporation with the company's acquisition of 55 titles in the Wonderwork library following at the end of the year. Sonar then opened a dubbing facility in Mexico City called the Fandango Studios in late 1999. By 1999, Sonar boasted an annual revenue of $150 million and owned around $1.5 billion worth of the children's television market, with then owning parts of television channels like Teletoon, which they own 10% of when it launched in 1997. So you could say they were doing well, but it was about to get very bad. In March 2000, the success of the two founders and the company would come to an end when it was leaked through an internal audit that around $167 million were invested into Bahamian bank accounts without approval from members of the board of directors. It was also revealed that Sinar had paid screenwriters from the United States to work while continue to accept federal grants and tax credits for the production of Canadian content. But how did they get away from this? Well, by using the names of Canadian citizens who are primarily non-screenwriters connected to Sinar. Sinar denied doing anything wrong. They would pay a settlement to Canadian Quebec tax authorities for $17.8 million and would have to pay another $2.6 million to Telefilm Canada, which is a Canadian government-funded agency. The value of Sinar stock would plummet, causing them to soon be delisted from the Toronto Stock Exchange. People speculated that there are multiple people involved with the investment scheme, including the founders of Sinar and CFO Hassanen Paju. It was claimed that Charest, Weinberg, and later Paju used Sinar as a piggy bank and schemed to transfer funds out of the company through a series of transactions to its own offshore holdings company. In 2001, as a part of a settlement between Sinar and the Quebec Securities Commission, both Charest and Weinberg had to pay $1 million each and were banned from Sinar for five years with no admission of guilt and none of the allegations being proven in court. 
In March 2004, Sinar would be purchased for more than $190 million from a group led by Novana founder Michael Hurst and former Novana president Topher Taylor, with Sinar being renamed to Cookie Jar. Then on April 14, 2004, at the age of 51, founder of Sinar, Micheline Charas, would pass away due to complications from plastic surgery. In June 2008, Cookie Jar would buy Deke Entertainment. The deal would be finished a month later, and Deke would merge and fold into Cookie Jar. Also in the Deke deal, Cookie Jar also acquired Copyright Promotional Licensing Group and one-third interest in international children's television channel, Kitco. It was also revealed that Cookie Jar was planning to buy the Care Bears, Strawberry Shortcake, and Sushi Pack franchises from American Greetings for $195 million. The deal was supposed to be finalized in December 2008, but it didn't go through as they couldn't line up financing and by late 2008. Considering the scenario, the deal didn't go through. But then, in late March 2009, they made a counter deal to buy the Care Bears and Strawberry Shortcake franchise from American Greetings for $76 million. And Cookie Jar had until April 30th, 2009 to include the deal of American Greetings. My guess is that they weren't able to pay it because in May 2009, American Greetings would file a $100 million lawsuit against Cookie Jar, with Cookie Jar filing a different lawsuit against American Greetings for $25 million. On March 2, 2011, an arrest warrant was issued for co-founder Ronald Weinberg, former CFO Hisane Paju, as well as two other people related to the 2000 Sinar scandal, with the crimes being listed as multiple counts of security fraud related to the Sinar scandal and forgery-related charges. Weinberg would be arrested nine days later. Meanwhile, CFO Hassane Haju and one of the two people associated with a scandal named Lino Matteo, who was the former president of Mount Real, was arrested the day after a war was issued. And the other person who was associated with the scandal named John Zanhudakis was arrested on March 15, 2011. The court case would go on for five years and would end in 2016. Then on August 20, 2012, DHX Media, or current day Wild Brain, announced that they would acquire Cookie Jar for $111 million. The purchase made DHX the world's largest independent owner of children's television programming. The acquisition would be completed on October 22, 2012. On January 24, 2014, Hassanane Paju was sentenced to four years in prison. Then finally, Following the end of production for Season 6 of Johnny Test, Cookie Jar would shut down and merge into DHX Media on December 25th, 2014. So you might be saying, that's the end of the story, right? Well, we gotta close another book. On October 1st, 2015, Hassan Paju was granted day parole for three months before later being granted full parole for the rest of his sentence. On June 2nd, 2016, Ronald Weinberg... John Zanhudakis and Lino Matteo were found guilty of the charges laid upon them in 2011. Then, on June 22, 2016, Weinberg would be sentenced to nine years in prison, while Zanhudakis and Matteo got sentenced to eight years in prison each. On May 3, 2019, Weinberg got full parole. Then, on May 1, 2020, after appealing his sentence, Matteo was released from prison. And now, finally, I am unsure what happened to Zan with the keys, but I'm pretty sure he is still in prison. But anyways, thank you for watching this video. If you want to, please subscribe and join the Discord. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I'd appreciate it. And until I upload again, later.